Hey, what's up guys? It's Foster and we're back working on my Time Attack S2000 today. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I basically laid out all the parts that I've got for the S2000 this year and all the different upgrades that I'm going to be doing. But one of the biggest upgrades I'm doing this year is the two-way adjustable suspension from Fortune Auto. So obviously I'm really excited to get these new coilovers installed on the car. So today's video, I'm basically gonna go over how I set up my suspension. And as you can tell, I've already got the control arms installed on the car and got the brakes installed. I didn't wanna bore you guys with too much of that process, but I did film a little bit of footage that I'll go ahead and show you. The first thing I'm gonna get started doing is setting the ride height on the S2000. Now, unfortunately, I sold my coilovers from last season, so I can't use those as a reference, but I do still have the stock suspension, so I'm gonna basically measure these and take an inch off, and that'll be my starting ride height for my Fortune Auto coilovers. Then we'll get the car on the ground and see how everything sits, and we can adjust it from there. So I've got the fronts mocked up on the Fortune Auto coilovers, but one thing I did notice is that the helper spring is making contact with my upper control arm. So I'm gonna have to either remove the helper spring or I'm gonna have to remove the spacer on the upper spring perch to give it a little bit more room. I'm gonna rip this out of here and then I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do. So it's the next day and I spent a little time yesterday dialing in the ride height, but more or less I've got it where I wanted. So for the fronts, I actually ended up getting some different top hats that are a little bit slimmer than the ones I had on the suspension originally. And the spacer as well was a little bit slimmed down. So that ended up giving me the clearance I needed to clear the upper control arm, as well as the fact that I adjusted the ride height and raised it up a little bit. So I'm really happy with the fronts. As you can tell, the rear is sitting a little bit lower, so I'm probably gonna have to slightly raise the rear, but more or less we're kind of where I wanna be. The car's got a really good stance right now, so. I'm going to focus a little bit today on setting the camber and setting the toe to see how the wheels fit underneath the fenders. And I'm also going to install some brackets for my external reservoirs. So in addition to adjusting the ride height in the rear of my car, I also went ahead and double checked the preload. Fortune Auto recommends I use 1 8 of an inch of preload since I have a double wishbone rear suspension geometry, but if you have a McPherson suspension geometry, they recommend you use a quarter inch. Check it out, I've got the shock line routed through the fender liner. I had to make a small notch in my original hole, but it was able to fit. I did use this little drill bit here that makes a nice circular cut, so nice and clean. And then it's mocked up in the engine bay where I want it to live right now. I had to remove my cruise control to actually clear room for this canister, but that's something I wanted to delete anyway. It's gonna save a little bit of weight. 
on the passenger side, I routed the line through the fender liner again, and then up top, I had to actually cut the hood prop uh, little bracket there, but I was able to turn that into a bracket for the external reservoir. So I'm really happy with how both these turned out. I like that they're symmetrical on both sides and it's going to be really easy to access the compression adjustment as well as the rebound adjustment. It's all right in that same location. So I think the fronts are done. Now let's go ahead and get started on the rear. So check it out, I've got the rear canister mounted as well. I'm really happy with how that turned out using that off-road bracket. Uh, I did have to put a pretty big hole in my trunk, but uh, you know, because race car, I'm okay with that. Uh, and then if you look down underneath the car, I did zip tie the line out of the way, so it's not gonna make contact with the control arm or the suspension or anything like that. So it's all tucked up and nice and neat. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for this video. I got the Fortune Autos installed, I set my ride height, I set my preload, and then we got the canisters mounted, and a whole bunch of other odds and ends that I had to get done to this car before we're ready for grid life. Now I wanted to check the droop and the compression and go over some of the more complicated suspension setup, do a corner balance, but I didn't have time for that in this video because I gotta get to grid life, so maybe I'll do that in a future video. With that said guys, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.